Good morning, class. Good morning. Um, this, this right here, um, it's called the Eagle Globe and Anchor, or uh, just simply the EGA. Um, some might see it as just a chunk of metal formed into an artistic piece, but I see it as uh, a humble symbol that tens of thousands of Marines have fought and died for. It's a symbol uh, that stands for honor, courage, and commitment to one's God, country, and core. Um, something that is earned for life and never taken away once you do earn it. And it stands for something bigger than you and me. Uh, now let me tell you why this exact one right here is, uh, is very important to me. Uh, let me tell you my story. Uh, in about uh, March 3rd, 2011, uh, I finally got the, got the chance to join the debt program, the uh, delayed entry program that the Marine Corps puts on. Uh, to get you ready for boot camp. And that's really where the journey started. Uh, where we met every Thursday. Uh, and we really just focused on physical fitness and kind of getting in that Marine mindset. Just barely, uh, not too much though. It wasn't too crazy, just every Thursday. And uh, fast forward uh, about nine months, I went to, I finally went to MEPS, which is the military entrance uh, processing station, um, where they put you through rigorous, um, medical and mental screening to make sure that you're good uh, to go forward to boot camp and all that. But the most important part about MEPS uh, is that I found out my date for boot camp. And uh, that was June 18, 2012. And at that point, it started to become very real. Uh, and it was so close. Um, uh, going on, uh, now that I had a date for boot camp, I really started to put things into high gear and try to get my, my mind and uh, my body really ready uh, for what I was about to go through. Um, some of the ways I, I did that, you know, just watching movies, you know, ears open, eyeballs click, a little documentary on boot camp. Um, and you know, everyone's seen Full Metal Jacket. Uh, kind of use that to see if I'd be able to do it. Um, uh, physically, I would always I would always work out at the uh, peak hours of the, the Arizona heat, uh, around like four o'clock, um, and always running, always doing bodyweight workouts, trying to push myself to uh, to be as ready as I can for boot camp. Uh, uh, watching these movies, I really noticed, uh, especially uh, in ears open, eyeballs click, uh, at the end when everyone's getting hell, uh, getting given their. Uh, EGA, you see everyone crying, and you see the pride, um, all the pride that they have uh, when they actually get this EGA at the end. And I didn't really understand it. I didn't really understand why they cried. I didn't really understand uh, the pride they had, but I just knew I wanted it really bad. Um, fast forward to June 18th, 2012, and I finally got a chance to go to boot camp. Um, and we get there. And we get rushed off the buses. I'm not sure if you guys seen like maybe videos of it, but you have the yellow footprints. And at that point, I knew that it was real. Um, they were screaming and yelling right off the bat. Uh, everything was just a blur. And at this point, you knew that uh, you're now in the training to get switched off from a civilian, start becoming a Marine. Um, phase one, the intensity was always insane. Um, they tore you down all the way uh, to where you just felt like you were nothing, uh, just like the biggest piece of crap in the world. Um, always screaming at you, uh, always on the quarter deck, which is uh, if you get in trouble or you mess up, you're always up there getting PT constantly, and it's just a constant rotation all day long. Uh, playing stupid mind games with you. Uh, it was just it was probably the, ter the most terrible phase of boot camp. And when I would lose faith, when I would lose hope, whenever I'd start looking down and tell myself I just want to quit, yeah, I would always had in the back of my head this, this EGA, all those Marines that you'd always see on TV or uh, on these movies crying, and you knew that you wanted that really bad. Um, phase two boot camp, about a month in, uh, we did a movement to Camp Pendleton. Um, Rewind a little bit. Well, I was at MCRD San Diego, Marine Corps Crew Depot San Diego. That's the main part. So after phase one, we went to Camp Pendleton. Uh, this is where our real training started. Uh, we went and did uh, grass week and range week, which is uh, just um, pretty much just shooting the guns, uh, 
learning the basics of uh, rifle marksmanship and really get into that. And this is where I have to introduce the hikes. Uh, you know, everyone thinks about hikes about like they're fun, going through you know mountains, backpacking with your friends. Uh, but these hikes were terrible, and I was it was it was it was an eye opener because you had 80 pounds of gear on your back, you had your rifle, um, and you were hiking through hills and, and mountains. And in Camp Pendleton, we did a, a 5K, an 8K, and a 10K throughout that entire time in phase uh, phase two, and. This is where we really started to focus on the tactical training. Uh, you guys heard of, like people sticks, those big sticks, they run to each other, like each other out, um, doing just a bunch of obstacle courses, team building activities. Um, and this is really the, where, the, where the speed intensity was focused on, where he didn't move fast enough, uh, you weren't focused, that they would just keep on pounding your head and you just keep on like, getting messed up over and over again uh, until they really got you. Uh, at this point, we were torn all the way down because that's the point of boot camp. They, they want to completely tear you down um, and rebuild you back up into something that they want, uh, into a Marine. Um, uh, at this point, um, I was torn all the way down, as I said, but learning all these things, uh, learning uh, all the basic stuff, they really started to, to instill you in that discipline and really started to build you back up. And this is the point where they really started to build you back up and slowly start to become uh, you know, a Marine, getting that Marine mindset really hard. Um, and this is where the pride really started to set in at this point. Uh, going through this training, you really understand where the pride comes from. It's so hard and so difficult. And in phase two, at the end of phase two, uh, the tunnel was near because we only had a month left. So packed up our bag, camp penalty once we were done, and headed back to uh, MCRD San Diego. Where you arrived with a, with a really with a new uh, sense of accomplishment, completing one of the hardest parts of boot camp. Um, the tempo in phase two was insane. We just kept on going, going, and going. Uh, we never stopped. Uh, phase three, we finally got to calm down a little bit. Um, this was really phase three, was really coming back and then focusing on physical fitness and getting ready for the crucible. Um, uh, and that towards the end of phase, uh, phase three, about a week before we went back to the Camp Pendleton. Um, you didn't really show the thing. Uh, you were excited and nervous, knowing that like it was so close. Um, the EGA was really only a week away, becoming Marines only a week away. Uh, but you knew that the hardest part of boot camp is here, and uh, the real test um, of your medal is, is, is here. Um, and you guys are probably wondering what the Crucible is. Uh, the Crucible is the final test to become a Marine. Uh, it really tests you physically and mentally, or it's a period of over 54 hours with only a few hours of sleep. Um, you get one MRE, which is a little meal ready to eat, which is nothing, and 45, uh, 45 miles worth of hikes, which is really like 45 miles worth of little rough runs. Uh, at this point, in, in 2012, the attrition rate, which is the dropout rate boot camp, was 14% due to injury and, and uh, recruits not being able to just physically do it or mentally do it. Uh, so I was, I was pretty nervous going into the Crucible. And we get back to Camp Pendleton, and we have a day to get ready, really, before we set out uh, on the Crucible. Uh, just getting our minds ready, our bodies ready, um, getting all of our gear ready, making sure everything was perfect for the next 54 hours. Uh, of course, I wasn't able to sleep because I was so nervous and excited to finally go through that. Um, we uh, got awoke at 3 a.m. in the morning, and we got up and we started our hike to the gas chamber, a 5K hike to the gas chamber, which is uh, probably the worst experience of my life. Um, you were in there for like 10, for about 10 minutes and you were put through rigorous uh, exercises. The first couple minutes, you kept your mask on to make sure you knew how to use it, and then they made you, made you take your mask off. They did workouts, but the worst part about it was I was the guide, was the head of the platoon, and for some reason, uh, my drill instructor, I don't know, set example, made me go through every time. So I went through like five times, uh, back to back to back, which is honestly the worst thing I've ever been through in my entire life. Um, we got done with that, and we did a 5K uh, little rough run, 
when you just have your gear on and you run a little bit uh, to the obstacle course. Uh, ran it three times back to back, which took us the rest of the day. Um, and then we went back to our bivouac site, which is our campsite. And that's where we started getting ready for the, for the nighttime. We did an 8K, uh, an 8K hike with ammo and casualties uh, to the movement under fire. And at, at that time, you know, just did the movement under fire. And we did the movement back to the bivouac side, which in the AK it got about like an hour or two of sleep, if that. Second day, we, uh, we got a walk at 1 a.m. and we did a 5K run to the team building course. Spent all day there, constantly going, not stopping. Uh, the team building course is called the Leadership Reaction Course. And it was a series of uh, events to where you uh, used your team to complete the obstacles every time you failed, which they are almost impossible. Every time you failed, uh, you had to buddy drag or buddy carry your your, uh, your buddy half a mile there and back. Uh, took us pretty much all day. Went to the stretcher course. Did the stretcher course uh, where it simulated Cassidy, and you had to run three miles with him. Uh, uh, but the 5K hike, and then we did a 5K hike back to the bivouac site. And we knew that the final test was here, and this was the hardest part. This part right here. Um, we went to bed. We got one hour. Got an hour of terrible sleep because you knew that the next day or the next hour uh, that you're about to go through the worst part. And you were tired, sleep deprived, had barely any food in your system. You just kept on going, like for up to this point, I would say like forty something hours. Um, just constantly going, barely any sleep. You know, it was cold. We got woke, put the gear on our back, and we uh, did a 10K to the Reaper. Uh, what the Reaper is, is a mountain uh, with a series of three hills. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how high it is, but when the truck drove up it, it became like a little dot at the, at the, at the top. I was terrified, but we went there. It was pretty much a 10K uh, ruck run almost to the bottom of the Reaper. And sitting, sitting there, we dropped our packs, got a 15 minute, um, a 15 minute break before we went up the mountain. You're just looking at it, you see the truck, the truck drive up, and you're just like, you've never seen anything like it. You're like, how the hell am I, how the heck am I supposed to um, get up that with all this gear on? I'm already dead tired, just ran here. You didn't really know what the heck was happening. You just wanted to quit. You're like, this ain't even, this ain't even worth it at this point. But I knew that I had to do it. We got up, put our packs on, and started walking towards uh, the Reaper, and started going up. At that point, for the first time I ever experienced a mountain like this, going up it, and it wasn't the first, but it was my first. Um, going up it was a blur, really. There was there was just like there was so much pain, and I can't I guess I, guess I can't really describe to you like you guys think hikes or like ooh. But there was so much pain because you have so much gear, you're so tired, and all these things accounted for for your tiredness. And it was just chaos. Marines were falling, um, passing out. It was it was it was, it was weird. Uh, I felt honestly, I felt like at some points I felt like I was gonna you know gonna black out. But um, I pushed and, and, and fought back, knowing that I'm literally this close to getting that thing right there. Right, we crested the hill and it was finally over. All the pain was suddenly gone. I made it to the top. Um, where we, they gave us an apple, a little bit of blue Gatorade. It was pretty good at the time. Uh, but we hiked back, which is, wasn't too bad. Um, and this is where the graduation came in. Uh, we marched to the parade deck. Our, held, our heads were held high, even though we were tired. But the moment was here, and we, you know, I couldn't be more excited, really. Uh, getting to EGA, I stood at the front of the formation, uh, being the guide. You know, all these emotions running through my body, just knowing that we you know, what I just went through. And it was on, it was awesome that I was finally done. It was awesome that I was finally going to get my EGA. Uh, but what made this this one so special is my my drill hat, or my one of my drill instructors, Staff Sergeant Hudson. Um, the guy who literally uh, 
was always on me constantly, being the guy. He always focused on me and always made sure I strive for excellence. Always, always messing me up, making sure everything uh, was was perfect in my aspect. Uh, he was really my father in the Marine Corps because he's the one who tore me all the way down, pretty much personally, and built me all the way back up. So he was the one who molded me into you know who I am really today, um, and the Marine I was. Uh, and he took it off his hat. He took his own personal one that he always wore with all of his cycles because they'd always wear it on the you know the smoky bear that weird green thing you see. And he took it off, he gave it personally to me, which meant a lot to me. Um, telling me he was honored that I was his God and I, uh, they did a great job. And it meant so much to me that he gave me that one. Um, while standing there receiving the EGA, uh, his personal one, I thought back to the past few months and really reflected what I just went through and what you know all me and my brother just went through. It was, it was an awesome feeling, you know, knowing that you're following in the footsteps of thousands of other Marines, you know, Marines who have won Medal of Honors, uh, Marines who have fought and died, given their all where they were, where you at, um, at that point. Uh, Marines have stood a bigger, uh, or something bigger than themselves, you know, and I really realized at this moment why I just went through what I, uh, what I just did. Um, you know, the meaning, the meaning of this, this piece of molded metal right here, uh, it's more than anything in the world. Uh, and as I said before, it stands for something you know bigger than, than me and you. You know, um, you might just see it on a, on a uniform walking around. You might see it on a commercial um, or tattooed on a marine. Uh, but just know that every marine that got one of these had, had like.